What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to begin our coverage of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So this will be the first video in a series covering every aspect of this drone. And I figured we'd begin with the basics. So we'll go over the unboxing, or I guess in this case, we'd call it the uncasing because it comes shipped inside of this case. So we'll go over everything that comes with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced when you purchase it. After that, we'll walk through the setup process of the drone itself through the DJI Pilot application on the smart controller. And then finally, we'll go for a full flight with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Now, before we get started, I wanna give a big thank you to Anatom Geomobile Solutions, AGS, for providing me with this Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. They are a national dealer of GPS surveying equipment, which of course includes drones. And they're the reason that all these videos with this drone are going to be possible here on the channel. So if you're interested in picking up the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced for say yourself or for your business, feel free to check them out. I'll leave their info down in the description. So getting started here with the first section of our video, the unboxing, or again, as I like to say, the uncasing of this drone. When you purchase your Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, it comes with a product certification pamphlet that states what drone it is that you bought, and it even comes with an inspection stamp. I assume that the drone was test flown prior to it being shipped out because there was a single five minute flight in the records when I looked. That is a much higher level of service than what's offered with DJI's consumer drones, but it is definitely a nice touch because of how expensive the Mavic 2 Enterprise advanced is. It's a major investment and these extra steps make you feel better about that investment. Now along with the product certification comes another piece of cardstock that shows how all of the different accessories fit inside of the hard case but notice how when you open up the case some of those accessories listed on the user guide aren't here. The reason behind this is because those extra cutouts that are left open inside of the hard case are dedicated for the accessories that come inside of the fly more kit which is offered as a separate add-on much like the consumer level Mavic 2s that DJI sells like the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. Those come with an extra fly more kit that you've got to purchase separately. Now in that kit comes a soft shoulder bag, some extra propellers, a charging hub, two extra enterprise self-heating batteries, a car charger, and a converter piece to charge USB devices from your drone batteries. If you're in the market for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, I feel like the fly more kit is almost a must buy because you definitely need extra batteries and at the cost that those batteries sell separately, it just makes sense to go with the fly more kit and get all the extra accessories for that discounted price because again it is a bundle the car charger comes in handy the shoulder bag can sometimes come in handy it's definitely a lot easier to carry around than this big hard case in certain scenarios so if you're going to make the investment into the mavic 2 enterprise advanced you're also probably definitely going to want to make the investment into the fly more kit now, moving on from those extra accessories that make up the fly more kit, when you purchase the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, it comes with a smart controller with a built-in screen, which is a nice premium touch, six total propellers, two extra sticks for the remote controller, an extra cap to cover the top accessory mount on the drone itself, a charger for the drone and a USB-C charger for the smart controller, the drone itself obviously with the battery installed, and that upgraded dual camera system with the thermal sensor and the standard color sensor. There's also a set of booklets which will probably never make their way out of the plastic to grab. And finally, in this foam sleeve are the three attachments that can be mounted on the top of the drone. We've got the light beacon, the spotlight, and the speaker. So looking over everything, this is what comes along with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced when you purchase it. Like I said, it's everything that gets you up and going, but you're definitely going to need some more batteries at least, and the hub to charge four batteries one after the other effortlessly. DJI luckily left some space in the case for these extras, and under the included attachments is a pretty large area for charging cords and other smaller accessories. In case I didn't make it clear in this video, <laughs> In case, in case I didn't make it clear in this video, the hard case does come with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. That was probably a given, but I figured I'd mention it in case anybody had that question. Overall, it's a good case, right? It's up there with like what GPC makes and what Nanook makes. It's durable, right? It's got two locking mounts on the front here. It's also got two padlock mounts on the side so that you can actually put a physical lock on the case here. It doesn't have like the reinforced steel or metal around the locking points, kind of like GPC would offer, but nonetheless, it comes with the drone. It offers really good protection for for your drone that you spent a lot of money on. And at the end of the day, I still wish that this drone came with some extra batteries because you are paying a pretty penny at $6,500 for it. But I assume if you're making that type of investment into a drone platform like this, you can probably pick up a couple of extra batteries on the side. Now, moving along here into the second section of our video, the setup process of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. It's a little bit more lengthy than DJI's consumer level drones. The process is overall more involved that has more steps to cover before getting in the air. So first up, you wanna 
make sure that you charge the battery of the drone as well as the battery inside of the smart controller. You don't have to charge it all the way up to like a full 100%, but again, know that the setup process as well as the potential firmware update you'll have after the setup process could be fairly lengthy and you don't want to have a drone that's like low on battery going through all of these different processes. So just charge up the battery and the smart controller and the drone. It'll make your life easier. Also, I just want to mention because some people might think their drone is broken and defective right out of the gate. The battery in order to light up and turn on needs to be plugged into a power source for it to then enter like its activation stage. So they deactivate the battery for shipping. So make sure you plug it in, charge it up and then begin the setup process. So upon booting up the drone and the remote controller, walking through the entire process, you'll first be prompted to select your language, which for me is English, of course. Then you'll have to agree to DJI's privacy policy. You'll choose your country. And then for the rest of the setup, you'll need to be connected to the internet. So a Wi-Fi network is required to join. From here, you can properly set your time zone, your date, and of course, the actual time. After all has been set up, it's time to log into your DJI account. If you don't have one, you can create one here through the smart controller, but maybe you wanna head over to your computer and just create one over there and then sign in on your smart controller. Once you're in, it's time to bind the aircraft to your account. And of course, like I mentioned, there's a firmware update right off of the bat, which in my case was just for the smart controller, but you might have an update that you have to do as well for the drone and the battery. You'd think and you'd probably hope by now that that is all the setup you need to go through before you can fly your Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, but unfortunately, that's only about the halfway mark. So I'm here to give you a quick breather, give you a quick break before we move on, because now what we're going to do is, of course, use a smart controller to set up the DJI Pilot application for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. All right, so first you'll accept the pilot terms of use. Then you'll accept the privacy notice and authorize the app to access your device's SD card, location, and other hardware information. Now, even though the drone has already been activated, you'll have to activate the aircraft again and provide some information on what industry you plan on using the drone for, which I guess can be considered like a question for survey purposes. After all of this is done, the aircraft will go through a reboot process. Now, the final thing you need to do to set this drone up is to activate DJI's enterprise level of their care program for your drone. Now, unfortunately, it does require me to put in some personal info. So I'm not going to show that setup portion here on the screen, but just know that after you fill that out, you get one year of complimentary DJI care, their enterprise level here for your drone, which is a nice addition. Now, for those of you that might be interested to dive a little bit deeper into DJI's care enterprise service, as it relates to the Mavic 2 enterprise advanced, it lasts for one year from the date of activation. It covers the aircraft body, gimbal and camera, the battery, the propellers, as well as the RTK module. If you have it installed, you get two replacements, the first of which cost five $520 and the second of which costs $580, which is a lot better than paying another $6,500. And for those interested, these are the 19 exclusions, which might be good to be aware of. So you know how to properly operate your drone within DJI's guidelines in case something were to happen to it so that you can be covered under their care program. Whew. All right. So that was pretty much everything you need to know about the unboxing or uncasing, as well as the setup of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Now, for my favorite part, let's get outside and do a full flight with this drone. All right, so this here is not my first ever flight with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. I've already had it in the air about six or seven times now, but I figured rather than share with you my first ever flight with this drone, it'd be a little bit more helpful if I had already flown it and show you guys some of its features. So let's go ahead and put this drone in the air. I do not have... I do not have a full battery. We've only got about 80%, but you know, we're not gonna be doing any sort of flight tests or I guess uh, extreme battery tests here. So we'll go ahead and fly this down in sport mode to the other bridge. As you guys know, whenever I do my flight videos from the top of this parking garage, I always like to just buzz it down to the bridge, get a fuel for the drone. But here's the thing, I've been flying this drone for like two and a half years, essentially, because I've flown the Mavic 2 the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. I also had some time with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and Enterprise um, the Enterprise Zoom. So I've had the same body and same airframe a lot with a bunch of different drones. I mean, I've flown this with so many different cameras on it. Um, now, as you guys saw, we also had the speaker attachment on there just for fun. I figured we'd put that up there. Um, and we're getting about 45 miles an hour as our top max speed, even with that speaker attachment on there. So just kind of some food for thought. We'll spin it around here now, throw it into the positioning mode. So again, what I want to do in this video, in this part of the video at least, is go over some things, some different features about this drone and kind of walk you through what the camera has to offer. Because at the end of the day, this is still the same exact airframe that we've seen um, in the previous Mavic 2 Enterprise, as well as just the general consumer grade Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom. 
Now that kind of has me wondering like what the future of the Mavic series is because this airframe is like two and a half years old. The camera is great. It's brand new. It's definitely the most improved thing about this drone. In fact, it's the only improved thing about this drone, whereas everything else is exactly the same. So, you know, with the Air 2S coming out that has a smaller form factor with O3, with the quad antenna system, uh, you know, it just kind of has me wondering exactly what the future of the Mavic 2 Enterprise is because this is a relatively older drone. So we're gonna put this drone up here and hover. And one of the biggest things about the cameras of this drone is that you can now zoom in, right? So right now we're recording um, just some video. It's actually recording both the thermal video as well as the uh, color video. So we're gonna be swapping back and forth in between the two. But here, if we are just um, within the color video, it's gonna be a little bit tough to do this. So with the color video, we can zoom in up to four times. So that's a pretty substantial zoom. I mean, we've got the drone hovering up there. It's about five, 600 feet away. And you can see me pretty good. Now we are recording in the 1080p um, resolution. We're not recording in 4K. If you record in 4K, you're not gonna be able to digitally punch in. So that's why we're here in 1080p. But the zoom is pretty good here when we are in the photo mode, or sorry, in the video mode. Now, if we flip over to the infrared camera, now there's a bunch of different color palettes you can choose from in the top right corner. If you kind of click like the artist palette, you've got a lot of different ones that you can use. You've got white hot, you've got black hot, rainbow one, iron red, arctic, fulgurite, <laughs> I think that's how that's pronounced, hot iron, rainbow two, tint, and medical. So whichever you prefer, you can use, whichever applies to your industry, you can use. For myself, I'm just gonna be using rainbow one here, or you know what, let's use white hot. So of course the hotter areas are going to display in white. We can go ahead and remove the palette selector. And even here with this 640 sensor, we're also able to zoom in. Now, it's gonna be relatively blurry, but I can say that if this was at nighttime and if you're trying to do like a search and rescue mission, that the zoom actually might come in handy. Here, when it's like, you know, broad daylight out, it's a little bit of an overcast, it's not going to be the best, but you can slightly make out the cars on top of the roof. And I'm sure that if it was later at night and everything had cooled off, if I was standing up here on the roof, you'd be able to see me clear as day with the infrared camera. So we'll go ahead and zoom all the way out. Now, I just want you guys to admire the quality of this camera because it's twice that of what came in the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. So this is a great thermal camera. It has a 640 image resolution. I mean, you can see each individual window inside of the apartment complex here. If I spin it around, if you look here over at the road, you can see each individual car, right? You can see that the heat is building up on the underside of the car because of the wheels, which is pretty cool to see. We'll spin it back around towards like this apartment building. I mean, we're right in broad daylight. This is a brand new building, so you wouldn't expect to see any sort of hot spots on the top side of this building. The biggest thing that I'm just trying to convey here is that the infrared sensor is so much better in this camera. Being able to have so much more resolution, I feel like I'm actually able to look at things with this camera, whereas with the Enterprise Dual, the very first Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, everything kind of seemed like blotchy and blobby. So what I'm gonna do is stop recording here. We're gonna flip over into the photo mode we're also gonna flip back over to the visible spectrum here. And I wanna show you guys the zoom capability when shooting photos. Now, the camera in this drone is a quad bayer sensor, right? So what that means is that you can shoot 48 megapixel photos, 8,000 by 6,000. It's technically a 12 megapixel sensor, but each of the individual pixels are then separated into four separate sections, giving it a overall uh, megapixel count of 48 megapixels. So you can digitally zoom up to 32 times. So we're up here at about 650 feet away, 250 feet high. And if we zoom way in here, <laughs> it's almost unreal look there i am <laughs> right i mean the drone is over there and while it's not the best image you know it's okay it's a little bit shaky because of course we're zooming in 32 times but that's pretty incredible let's zoom all the way out one more time remember this is all digital zoom it's not optical zoom so you have a really high resolution sensor there's a little bit of chop there so now we're all the way back at 1x We'll zoom all the way in one more time. And look, you can see the color sweatshirt I'm wearing, the color pants I'm wearing, the color of my hair. That's pretty impressive. Here's the one gripe I have with the photos though. If I go to take this photograph right here, 
the photo doesn't take zoomed in. So it won't be this image. It'll be, you know, the one X image, which is zoomed all the way out like this. And then it's up to you when you're editing to digitally zoom in and look at it. I kind of wish that it would take a photograph. Oops. I kind of wish it would take a photograph zoomed all the way in, maybe take two photographs, one all the way zoomed out and one all the way zoomed in. That would be really helpful because, you know, a lot of people don't have the means to just blow the image up and work with that high of a resolution image uh, on the fly, especially. So I wish it would save that zoomed in image. It's kind of a pain. But if we flip over to shooting video and if we start recording video again, right? Of course, you guys are now watching the clear video feed coming straight off of the SD card. You can zoom in here and it's actually zooming in on the video, which is helpful. But 4X is nothing like 32X. That's huge, right? Okay. So let's zoom on back out here. Now, just because we've got the speaker attachment on here, let's fly over towards myself and play a little bit of a message. So of course, you've got a lot of different um, attachments for this drone. The RTK module is coming in the future, but um, right now we've got the light beacon, we've got the spotlight, and we've got the speaker. Now I'm wearing a lapel mic, so I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear the speaker. We've got it up at about 100 decibels. It's facing me. It's about 10, 10, 15 feet behind the camera. So let's go ahead and we will do the speaker. It's up in the top left corner of the microphone. We can tap on that and we can just talk into the microphone or talk into the remote controller and it will broadcast that audio clip directly to the speaker or you can save predefined um, speeches. We'll go over that in a second. So if I tap here, oh, we'll, we'll hold it. Hey, what's up? This is Billy and this is a test of the Mavic 2 Enterprise speaker attachment. Did it play? <laughs> Let's see. Hey, this is Billy, and this is a test of the Mavic 2 Enterprise speaker attachment. Hmm. I would have assumed that it would play it. I literally just tried it out. Okay, so that was an epic failure. So guys, in the future, uh, I'm going to be uploading a lot of videos on this drone because it's really fascinating, especially the camera. It's so much better. Um, this is just, again, like a preliminary flight that I've got here. The biggest upgrade about this drone is the cameras. I really, that's the only upgrade that we've got in this drone over the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. Um, of course, you know, if we were running a mission where we had to be able to zoom in, that's probably the biggest upgrade of this camera is the zoom capabilities, the digital zoom. Um, and that's a side of also the higher resolution thermal camera. So again, if we wanted to zoom in from here and see what time it is on the clock, well, you know, if we're shooting video, we've only got a 4X zoom I'm saying only 4X digital zoom, but if we zoom all the way back out, we'll stop recording video, we'll flip over to shooting photographs. Now let's see how close we can get in on that clock. We will probably be able to see the full clock, although it's not going to be as detailed. Look at that. <laughs> that zoom gets me all of the time. Let's shoot some thermal photos here though. So on the screen here on the smart controller, which by the way, including a smart controller is a really nice touch because you know, some companies might buy, be buying these for their employees and they don't want them using like personal devices. So it's really good because you're able to give them a remote controller that they can fly the drone with completely. You don't need like an external device, which is nice. Um, and of course it has a lot of other benefits that I've mentioned in previous videos. It's brighter, it's a dedicated drone device. So you don't have to deal with like people calling you and stuff like that. So let's go top down on this roof. Let's say we wanted to do, you know, a roof inspection and shoot some photos of this. We can see a split view here directly on our screen, which shows you a thermal view as well as the color view. The only problem is, you know, we're looking at it on such a small screen being on the smart controller that it's good to be able to see them side by side and reference both of them at the same time, but it's kind of small. So we'll flip over just to the IR. And just because it's right in the middle of the day, it's kind of tough. Let's flip on over to like a rainbow. So this is a much higher fidelity image. I'm going to go ahead and snap a photograph and I'll put this up on the screen so you guys can see it in its full resolution. Right now we're at about 250 feet high. I'd say that we're, well, because we're on the parking garage, yeah, we're about a true 250 feet above the building. But if we wanted to get down lower and let's say look at each individual air conditioning unit, just to get a sense for how, of a, how high of a resolution the camera is. taking forever. Come on, boy. So 
so yeah, look at that. That is a much higher resolution. Look, being able to shoot these photographs here. I mean, you can see inside of each of the air units, which is pretty good. We'll go ahead and snap another photo here. I'll put that one up on the screen as well so you guys can see it in its full resolution. But yeah, I mean, with this drone, the biggest differences, of course, are the camera. That's it, really. Um, and the smart controller, the fact that it comes with the smart controller. Um, they have different palettes, different color palettes for your thermal camera. They have uh, some different settings that I've noticed digging through the menu settings. So for example, you can actually put this drone into Addy mode, which is pretty interesting. So right now, we're at 29%. I'm not going to push it. This drone is more expensive than the rest of the Mavic 2s that I've flown. <laughs> Let's try the speaker one more time, just so it's not a complete epic failure. I'll put the drone over here. All right, don't fail me now. Let's try it a little bit differently. So in order to save, and we'll flip back over to the color, just so that it's not driving you guys crazy looking at that. Look, you can see though, I'm a little bit warmer. <laughs> and you can see my camera's a little bit warmer too. I mean, that's a good resolution for the camera because, for that camera, because this camera's small and my head is small and I can tap on here and get some temperature information. So yeah, I mean, that's the biggest upgrade here is these cameras, that's gonna be great. So we can back it up so it stops beeping. We can add some audio into here, right, to save. So let's record some audio. Hey, this is Billy Kyle, and this is a test of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Speaker Attachment. We'll save that to the aircraft. Hmm, all right. Epic failure. <laughs> Epic failure on the attachment part, but don't worry. We will cover the attachments much more in future videos. So if you guys enjoyed this first look at the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, of course we went through what came in the box. We went over some warranty information, some DJI Care Enterprise information. We also covered um, the setup process of it, as well as the relatively first flight with this drone. But again, guys, we're gonna be covering this a lot more in advance in the future. I gotta give, again, a huge thanks to AGS for sending this drone out. They're what making, they, they are the people making all of these videos possible. So if you guys are interested in picking up a Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced for yourself, for your company, for your business, feel free to go ahead and reach out to them. I'll put their contact information as well as their website information down there in the description. Be sure to guys stay subscribed here on the channel because we're gonna be posting some more videos over the coming months of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced as I learn a little bit more about it, as well as hopefully some firmware updates come out about it. And of course, we'll be tackling some different use cases for this camera in depth for certain scenarios. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.